Hey Morgana and I'm back with uh, some more Taekwondo Tuesday and <clears throat> so let's get right to it. Let's start with our warm up. Okay, yeah. And we'll start with our neck. And counting in Korean. Ana, two, set, net, dasa. Yes, sir. You'll go. You'll go. I hope. And you. Hi, Mike. How's it going? <coughs> Neck rotations. Hana. <coughs> Two. Set. Net. And dasa. And neck rotations back. You seem good. That's good. Hana, two, set, net, dasa. Oh, my neck is always stiff. <laughs> and arm rotations. Actually, what am I stepping for? Arm rotations. Forward. Hana, two, set, net, asa, asa, elga, ero, aho. And yo, and going backwards. Hana, two, set, net, dasa, yasa, ilgo, yo, aho, yo. And shoulder rotations. Did I do the shoulder rotations first and then the windmills? I can't remember now. Don't really matter. Shoulder rotations forward, shoulder rotations back. Did you do homework today, Mike? <laughs> Hana, two, set, net, asa, asa, ilgo, yero, aho, and yo. And backwards. Hana, two, set, net, dasa, yasa, ilgo, yero, aho, and yo. Oh. I'll probably not be 100% present. All right, Mike. Don't forget to do your homework. Okay, and try to remember. Ah, uh, arms up, palms down, and a tool set net. The count of four is one set, and we're counting in Korean. So, and a tool set net. Palms up, and go up. Hana, hana, tool set net. Hana to set net set. Hana to set net net. Hana to set net dasa. <coughs> Doing the laundry, she cooks and has a good chunk of philosophy. <laughs> Ooh, philosophy. Okay, well, hopefully, at least this will keep you awake while you're reading philosophy. <laughs> Okay, and twist, two, and two, that's one set, ready, Hana two, set, net, Hana two, set, net, two, Hana two, set, net, set, Hana two, set, net, net, Hana two, set, net, dasa, and waist rotations. I basically have to revise more than half of the curriculum due tomorrow we have a quiz. Oh, quiz time! <coughs> yeah, it's that time of the year, isn't it? Because it's November now, right? We're about halfway through, uh, halfway through the semester or term. <coughs> Waist rotations. Counterclockwise five, clockwise five. Hana, two, set, net, dasa. Hana, two, set, net, and dasa. Now, let's see, my stream lapse is working. Uh, halfway, no, no, the exam is in right under a month. 
Oh, really? <clears throat> Wait, but you started in... Didn't you start school in, like... Didn't you start school in August? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, when did you... St yeah, you started in August. Oh, man. It's like... Well, two months. It's been two months, and then you get November and December. And I remember about halfway through. When do you finish? <laughs> okay, hip rotations. Hana. Two. Set. Net. Dasa and the other way, Hana, tool, set, net, dasa. You know, I just noticed we don't leave, our, we didn't leave our curtains open today, Nate. So, or Nate, <laughs> don't get to watch me do the taekwondo. Okay, and then knees. Yeah, I only have philosophy in the first semester. Ah, that's cool. Did hips. Feet together. Um, knee bends. Knee bends on a tool set net. Okay, so four counts, one set. I'm gonna do five sets. On a tool set net. On a tool set net. Tool. On a tool set net set. On a tool set net net. On a tool set net. That's a, okay. And knee rotations. Knee rotations. Bend and counterclockwise, five counterclockwise, five clockwise. Hana, tool, set, net, dasa. Hana, tool, set, net, dasa. And ankle rotations. Uh, I'm doing my left foot. <clears throat> you can either mirror me or do your left foot. Okay, uh, five out, five inwards. Hana, tool, set, net, dasa. Hana, tool, set, net, dasa. And the other foot. Five out, five in. Hana, tool, set, net, dasa. Hana, tool, set, net, dasa. And you can also shake your feet out if you want. Shake your feet up. I am so tired. <sighs> stayed up. I stay, accidentally stayed up again. <laughs> squat, squat. Uh, no. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Um. So where's that? That. Hands. Can't forget the hands. Can I still make you on? Okay. Hands. Can you do this. Loosen up your wrists a bit. Actually, you should do this too if you've been sitting down at your desk and writing. But nobody writes anymore. I think we all just type. If you're typing, typing a lot, shake your hands out. Shake your fingers out. And now we demonstrate a back for fist. Yes. <laughs> you can be the target dummy for this exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Typo. <laughs> One second here. He said, if I'm you, sure. I said, he has a long way to go. <laughs> I'll be right back.
warmed up the head. Uh, hands, hands, hands. Wrist. Shake your wrists out. Hi, Lee from Calvary. How's it going? You have a long way to go. Yeah, but I'm not going to stoop that low. Then do a dropping back fist. He doesn't know how to do a dropping back fist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and just setting up the wrist a little bit and shaking my fingers out. All right, and how are you today, Lee? Ugh. I don't even know what to drop my face. <laughs> do a turning back fist, spinning back fist. <clears throat> Yeah, hold on a second. Uh, my kneecap is, uh, I have a loose kneecap. And it likes to, like, shift. Lisa is doing well, made affiliate on Friday. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Congratulations. I know that, uh, that little affiliate run can be a little, like, oh my god, it's never gonna happen. That's good. <laughs> Okay, um, so let's do some gentle stretch kicks to warm up a little bit more. So we'll go just into our little sparring stance here. We'll go into our sparring stance. Right leg is our back leg. We're going to just do some gentle stretch kicks. Just pull straight up straight and pull back down. I'm going to do 10 each leg to warm up. Hana, two, set. Net. Dasa. Yasa. Ilga. Yura. Aho. And yo. And we switch. Man, I still need to go out and do more running. <laughs> and I still need to find a place to go and do skipping. Like, I could try to do skipping, I think, at the parks, but like, I don't want to use my skipping rope on the grass. We'll just tear up the grass, right? So whenever I've been out for a run, I keep looking for, like, a place to go skipping. that has, like, at least a concrete area that I can skip on. And the only places in the parks that have concrete are the pathways where people are walking. So I can't skip on those. It's stupid. <laughs> I guess I could, I mean, I did pass by some, like, schoolyards that, like, mini basketball courts that I could possibly skip on if no one's playing basketball. That's what I was thinking, but, ah, uh, takes a while to figure out. Okay, the other leg, left leg, I have left leg stretch kick, we'll take this easy. Hana, two, set. Net. Dasa. Yosa. Ilga. Yoro. Aho. And yo. And relax, everyone. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that little last uh, trying to get to affiliate is pretty hard, especially if you've never. If you just start brand new on Twitch, that's always the hardest part. I know some people have been able to get to affiliate pretty fast, but but that's usually because they've been on Twitch for a while on different chats and stuff and managed to get some friends on Twitch who follow them and then they start streaming and then they get to the affiliate pretty fast right after. But if you haven't been on Twitch prior to that, it gets, it's pretty hard. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so we warmed up. Maybe we should give me a break and I think should we do some punches or blocks? We should do some punches actually. Okay, I'm pretty tired, but let's do some punching. Okay, so from our ready stance, Junbi stance. Let's go into our heart stance like this. And actually, you know, I'm gonna move over just slightly. 
to me. I'm going to our horse stance. Taekwondo horse stance over here, like this, and left arm out. And we're going to do 10 slow punches to start. Hana. Two. Set. Net. Dasa. Yusa. Ilga. Yuro. Aho. Yo. All right. Now we're going to do 10 punches, normal pace. Uh, beginners can take it slower if they want, or just continue to do slow punches if you want. And advanced students, go at your own pace. Remember to do full length punches. Don't do this, okay? All the way, okay? So we're going to do 10 punches, and I'm just going to count as I go. One, two, three, net, dust, yo. And I lost count there. <laughs> Engine bay. Okay. I'm a little tired today. Sorry, people. This has just been too much to do lately. Um, acquaint wait, what? Acquaintances? Yeah. We're now leveling up by creating levels and making emotes. Emotes, emotes are fun. <laughs> have fun with it. Making emotes are fun. I still have a few more emotes to make, actually. But... Yeah. Other than that, I think I'm okay with the emotes right now, huh? I just have to, I have a list of ideas for different kinds of emotes. Thank you, Nate. Mm. Or Mike. Was that Mike? Mike. Mike. <laughs> he left you the band hammer. <laughs> Alright, so let's do some more punches. Let's do some more punches. Let's do this kind of punching from our from our sparring stance, we'll do some uh, reverse punches. Okay, we'll do 10 each arm. We'll go kinda, right? Now remember, when we punch, when we punch, turn like this, right? Okay, and if anybody has any questions, I know I'm going through this pretty quickly today. It's mostly because I started late and I'm trying to get through some stuff. And then I think I'm also gonna do some strength training today and we'll do some stretches. I can share once. <laughs> Huh? Once in a while, oh, communism, Nick? That, that's a little bit extreme. All right, guys. What to do when your mods go crazy? All right, we're gonna do 10, punch, ten punches with the reverse hand. Ready? Hana. Two. Set. Net. Dasa. Yosa. Ilga. Yoro. Aho. Yo. And switch. <laughs> switch, 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 switch. And ten with the other hand. Hana. Two. Set. Net. Dasa. Yosa. Ilgo. Yoro. Aho. And yo. And Junbei. Yes, I see Streamlabs is working. Uh, okay, if you want to relax, take a breather. Uh, new people have a chance to catch up on the exercise. Um, uh, I referred someone on my stream to watch your Taekwondo says, Oh, thank you, Lee. That's cool. Um, let's see. I need a break. I'm actually really tired today. I just had a lot to do and I was up a little too late again. Okay. So that was a little bit of punching. Um, let's work on some blocks. Let's work on some blocks. Uh, do I want to do... See, it's hard to do the... I like to do the... The stances with the blocks. I like to do the, the the stance drills and do the blocking. I guess we can do that a little bit. But there's also like I can stay still and do them. We can do that. Let's see. 
Okay, everyone, go to Junbei. And we're going to step right like that, like this, into a long stance. Is it a long stance or a walking stance? Long stance. Long stance is good. You need to practice long stance. And then do a low block with when you do your long stance. So what we're going to do is we're going to step forward and do a low block. So same hand and same leg. So, so the right leg is going to step forward. That means the right hand is going to do a low block. Okay, so just watch carefully and do that. Okay, and that. Okay, so, Hana, to. I know you can't see my feet anymore. Set, and net. I had room for like six. <laughs> now we can, since I don't have room to actually do the turns when we're in this stance. I'm just going to step backwards and do low blocks. So we're going to step backwards. This is going to be a little bit more confusing, but what's going to happen is we're going to step backwards with our left leg, and the right hand is going to do a low block because the right leg will be in front. So, Hana. Do. Set. Net. Dasa. Checking my distance. Yes, sir. And in day. <clears throat> By the way, we can do some low block practice. Just stand still. You can stand still. Um, you can stand still. Just stand in your uh, our nice little casual jinbe stance. We can stand like this and just practice doing low blocks this way, which is also a very good way to practice low blocks. I'll do ten, and we're gonna alternate. And if you're a beginner, um, if you have any questions about how to do some of these, I mean, you can follow along as best as you can. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm going through it pretty quickly today. Um, but um, I've explained some of it in some of my previous streams. And I'll be alternating between with the different streams. I'll be going from, like, reviewing techniques and explaining them in more, more depth. So today I'm going to go kind of go through it pretty quickly because I'd like to get to, um, I'm going to get to some strength training today and doing some stretching after our workout. Okay, so Junbi, and let's do some low block. So simple, just do that and low block. Okay, from that, now from there, go. Hana, tu, set, net, dasa, yosa, elgo, yoro, aho, and yoro. And do me again and relax. <laughs> I'm gonna go progress my laundry and start cooking. What's on the menu? <laughs> uh, yes, that's interesting. I wonder what, what Mike is cooking today. Um, let's see, because Mike, Mike has uh, moved out and he's in university now. So he has to cook his own meals. <laughs> All right. So that was a little block. We do some punches. We do a little block. Let's go over some kicking. Let's go over front kick, front step kick. So back to our fighting sense like this. So our fighting sense is approximately like this. Just try to copy me. Um, so from from this Junbi stance, move the right leg back about one shoulder one shoulder width. Apart, going backwards, and then not too far apart from each other. The width isn't too far apart. Kind of like these heels are like I don't know, like half a foot away <laughs> from each other. So that's that's the uh, stance I want for the sparring stance. Pull our fists out in front like this, right? So we're gonna do a front snap kick. And if everyone remembers, with all the kicks in Taekwondo, you should lift with your knee. So we're gonna so the front snap kick. Here we go. So front snap kick. We start off this way, like every technique in Taekwondo, really, and then just extend and bend back, and then step down. That's your front snap kick. Uh. He's asking if there's a double. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Hold on. The mount, it's kind of like the one you did that in the black bull pattern, I think. Pizza, hold on, I'm gonna go back on chat. Pizza and Red Bull, most likely. 
or ramen. Not, not sure which. Is there a double low block in Taekwondo? Speaking of, I might have ramen. We shall see. Uh, like a cross? No, 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 not cross. I know what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, I think you have that in the black belt pattern. The one that has the mountain block. <coughs> mm, I remember which pattern it is, actually. Because that would be, I think... I don't think it's in the second hand pattern. Mm. But wouldn't it be something basically like, like, would be something like that, right? You start off with a cross block, yeah, actually. Yeah, like a cross. You say, yeah, there is a double low yeah. one. There's like this. You just go down and like that. But again, I don't, don't, I try to remember which black belt pattern it's in. Actually, Nate, you could look that up. Where's my books? Yes, I can just hand you the book and you can go look it up. <laughs> It's in one of the black belt patterns for sure, yes. Um, and classes. <laughs> Shin ramen. Like a low block. I don't know what you mean by a wedge block, but there is a double low block. It's basically a double low block. You, you, but you would start with crossed and then down. But a cross block, cross block is this. Cross block. You can you do a cross block this way. That's a cross block, but, but the opposite is a double low block like that. Um, no, it's not in the, it's not in the second hand one. Anyways, we'll get to those later. Those are a little bit more advanced. I'm not going to teach those, um, because there are more like black belt techniques. <laughs> Only has lowly first hand. <laughs> so if you are having a, yes, like that. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we did a little block. We're going to just do some front kicks. We're going to do some front kicks. This. Okay, so front snap kick, bend the knee, extend, and down. So when you extend, bend, bend your leg back, and step down. Okay, I'm going to do 10 each leg, and Hana, I'm just relaxed. I'm going to do it pretty relaxed today. Two, set, net. Dasa, Yasa, Elga, Yuro, Aho, and Yo. And we're gonna switch. And switch. And we're gonna do the same thing with the other leg, same kick. Remember to bring the knee up first and then extend. Bend your leg back and step down. Go. Hana. Oops. Two. Set. Net. Dasa. Yasa. Ilga. Yuro. Aho. And yo. And down. And back to Jinbi. And everyone can relax. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I actually have to review my black belt pattern still because it's been a while. Yeah, Nate, it's pro it's pro it's not in it's not in Gorio because it's not in Gorio, right? Yeah. Uh, it's not in Kamgang. No, it's just a guess, I right? <laughs> I likely misremembered, it's fine. Huh? Carry on, I just likely misremembered, it's fine. No, it's in one of them for sure. It's not in Gorio. And then you drink too much coffee. That's why your leg shakes. <laughs> no. <laughs> right. Wait, what's going on? Uh, wait, Alamad, no. <laughs> oh, dears. <laughs> Didn't like the Korean word. <laughs> is doing all the patterns from beginning up to our present level. Yeah, I don't have enough time to do all of that today. And I also need to review them and I don't have room to do all the Taekwondo patterns here. So, um, 
otherwise I would be doing all the patterns. Um, in fact, I, I often spent about a half an hour doing patterns sometimes, and then, uh, but that would require me to switch out the different Taekwondo streams. So there would be one, one Taekwondo stream doing patterns and another one just doing kicking and just focusing on techniques. But because of the limited space I have in a small apartment, I can't do, I can't do full patterns. Um, uh, but yeah, um, I, I, it's a pity, but I, unfortunately I can't <laughs> unless I rent a place and I probably, probably can't really rent a place right now because we're all in partial lockdown. Actually, we're heading for more extreme measures, <laughs> I think, in the Netherlands, so. Automize, it's not as crazy as you think because you can type tart. <laughs> Not some Korean, Korean coffee is the best coffee. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Okay. So we did the front snap kick. Do I want to do axe kick? I'm going to check the time. It's like, it's uh, 35 minutes in. Uh, so yeah, I was trying to decide if I wanted to do part of the pattern today, but it's only four steps. So it's pretty awkward. It's hard to see here. Oh, and, uh, we did punches, we did the front snap kick, those are the two basic things. Uh, we did a block, we could do, oh, uh, yes, sparring technique number one. We can do sparring technique number one. I'm going to put a couple of techniques together, okay, so we am going to go back down here, and go back into our sparring stance. Now, sparring technique number one is pretty simple for beginners. What we're going to do is, we're going to do a front snap kick, like this. Step down, and then we'll keep your hands up, and then follow it with a punch. That's called, uh, we're gonna call that sparring number one, sparring technique number one, right? Yeah, okay, so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna just go down the floor doing that, and you'll, and you'll alternate legs while you're doing it. So, so watch, right? But, remember to do that, sorry. And normally, I kind of don't want to do that here in my small apartment. But normally, you're supposed to yell, or in Korean, it's called key up. You're supposed to key up on the punch. So you just do press snap kick. Cut. Usually, I key up a lot louder, but because I'm in an apartment, I don't want to scare my neighbors. And then do it again. And punch. Okay? Normally, we key up. I'm gonna, kind of going to skip the key up being part. <laughs> Okay, and then again, and go down the floor. What you can do in place of kiapping is just breathe with the techniques. So look, right, right, okay, and to me. So that's uh, starting technique number one. It's a little bit of basic, yeah, basic technique, uh, combining some of the movement and the, the, the kick and the punching. They'll just think one of us is punching the other one. No, okay. So, actually I think what I'm gonna do next is, we're gonna go and skip, I'm gonna skip the crescent kicks and axe kicks today, and we're gonna go and we're actually gonna practice doing kicks using the wall and help uh, build up our balance and strength. Um, as well as uh, try to improve the technique for our kicks. Yeah, as I learned in other arts, important thing is to exhale with the strike. The sound just forces you to do it since you have to exhale to make the sound. I think I'll disappear until tonight. If I start now, I won't have to stress about anything. That's all right, Mike. You're welcome to lurk. And exhale with an extra core. Yeah, I mean, the camping is kind of the same thing. <laughs> Nate could never get into the key up thing. I don't know. You just, I don't know, you, you seem so like self conscious about doing it. Because she didn't want to scare the whole class. <laughs> you just sound like a giant. Alright, what was I gonna do? Oh, wall kicking. 
We're going to do practice our kicks off the wall. So the two, kick, two basic kicks in Taekwondo that we practice while we're using the wall is we can practice our roundhouse kick. And I showed everyone how to do a roundhouse kick last time. As I said, every kick in Taekwondo starts with bringing the knee up like that. So for the roundhouse kick, we bring our knee up like this, just like the front snap kick, except when we extend, we turn on our supporting foot. So you're gonna try and turn, you're gonna try and turn all the way over, and by that I mean when you turn the full all the way over, your heel, your supporting the heel on your supporting leg will face completely, face the front completely. So you wanna end up like that. So so what we're gonna do is we're going to practice using the wall. And when we use the wall, it'll help us to uh, build up some strength in our supporting leg and help us get an idea of how to balance on one foot <laughs> when we're doing kicks like this. Because especially when you, you especially if you want to start doing higher kicks, you need the balance so you're not falling over when you do a high kick. So, so stand maybe about at about two shoulder widths away. So I'm going to stand about two shoulder widths away and I'm going to turn so that my heel is pointing forward and I'm going to put my leg up like this. So bend the leg and pull my leg up like this. Right? So just keep your leg up, bend your knee. Uh, you can point your toes for the roundhouse kick if you want. Um, that's generally how we kick when we're kicking when we're kicking these things, that's how we generally kick with the with our toes pointed. Otherwise, you pull your toes back and you kick with the balls of your feet. So from here to do the wall kicks. So try to make a straight line, and then when you extend, you should see a pretty much a straight line going from your shoulder straight down to your toes. That's what you should have for your kick. It's, oh, I'm itchy. <laughs> okay, so. What we're going to do is then, we're going to do 10 on each leg when we do that. And so for this to also try to work on your alignment and work on your breathing while you do each kick as well. And so, so into position, we get on our wall. And actually, funny enough, I feel a stretch in my quad. Okay, so we're going to do 10. Ready? Go. And then, two, set, net. And down. <clears throat> and switch to the other foot. Going to do the same thing. Why is this on your cheek? I washed my pants. Why is it itchy? No idea. Huh? No idea. No idea? Alright, so you switch to the other leg. That means your supporting heel should be facing to the front. Bend your kicking leg. Make sure you have a nice straight line, right? From your shoulder down to your toes. I'm gonna kick with my toes pointed. Actually, kicking with my toes pointed helps me remember the alignment, but yes, you can kick with your toes pulled back and hit with the balls of the feet. Okay, so from here, I'm trying to get the alignment straight. It's been a while since I've done these too. And you'll probably feel something here in the back here. Okay, so I'm gonna do 10 and try to make sure you maintain a straight line, right? And you try to keep your leg level, like try to keep your leg when you sit at the same distance. Like it's easy to kind of like adjust while you're kicking. But don't do that. So keep the same level, same height, and just extend. So we're gonna go, I'm going to do 10. Hana, two, set, ne, rasa, yasa, yoga, yoro, aho, yo. And step down. Alright, everyone take a breather. Oh yeah, there were just sirens. Um, some of us do a silent key up. Yeah, I just learned it silent, so the loud ones feel weird and silly. But the kids love it, Nate! Mm -hmm. The kids love it! Sure do. 
actually the parents love it too because their kids get really really tired running around yelling all day for like a couple hours and then they go home and sleep like little angels <laughs> or not or not depending on how much energy the kid has huh? total lies hmm? why because it didn't work for you no i'm saying that they're angels i know yeah, the school I was at for most of my Taekwondo, actually, was at, I was at this one school for a long time, um, mostly as a black belt, because I went there after I got my black belt, but I was there the longest, for sure, because it takes a lot longer to go from one black belt to the next, and uh, we basically had, a, had programs where kids uh, would go there and do their homework after school, but they had to finish their homework before they could do Taekwondo class. <laughs> I can imagine some of them crying. They just want to run around and scream, but they can't because they have to finish their homework. <laughs> All right. So the next kick I'm going to do, and we're going to do it the same way. We're going to use the wall. I showed this to you last week, which was a side kick. And a side kick, let me show you the side kick again. So side kick is, again, you start bringing the knee up. So this time, this time we turn first and then extend outwards. And the side kick is significantly different from the roundhouse kick because you'll notice after a period of time that the power in the side kick comes from the butt area, whereas the power in the roundhouse kick is mostly in the quads. It's mostly in the quads. But roundhouse kick also too, you can use the hips so as you get more advanced in Taekwondo when you do roundhouse kicks, you'll notice you push your hip in when you do the roundhouse kick. It gives you a bit more power, but it's still not as strong as a side kick. <laughs> side kick is pretty much 100% power from here, from here, from your hips. Can you see butt? Miss hips. Mm -hmm. Hip power. So let's do so for the side kick, we're going to practice the kicking motion again on the wall. And again, this will help us get used to our balance and help build up some strength in our supporting leg. So for the side kick, because like I said, we turn all the way over first and then we extend. So for the side kick, we start like this. And technically, we use this part. Uh, guys, is it? Use this part of the foot, which is called the blade. It's technically, use the blade of the foot to kick. It could be a little difficult even for me sometimes because I have I've been on practice. It's a little difficult for me to get the blade kick out. <laughs> but for now, we're going to concentrate on the motion of the whole leg that we need to do with the side kick. So, first thing, my supporting leg, the heels pointing forward. And we're gonna do this, right? But so, and then think about pushing this way, pushing that way. So think of, think about your knee pushing outwards for the kick, right? But when you do that, after you get the extension, all the power is coming from the hip. So you're gonna do, and I'm doing my side kick pretty low today, because otherwise it wobbles. So because you, because like I said, you want to maintain. Throughout the whole motion, maintain the same height of the kick. So that's my leg. So I'm gonna do ten. Huh. Oh, that was bad. Two. Set. Net. Dasa. Yasa. Elgop. Yuro. Ahop. And yo. And down. And we're going to switch to the other side. Uh, any questions? No questions, okay. Okay, next one. Next leg, side kick. So, supporting leg, get your supporting leg, heel out, right? Get your foot up. Try to get your foot into the blade position. I can't see my foot. Try to get your foot in the blade position. Right. And you're just going to extend like this for the side kick. And like, like the roundhouse kick, we want that straight line 
going from the shoulder down to the heel this time because we're not pointing our toes. So I'm going to do 10 on this side. Hana, two, set, net, dasa, yasa, ilga, yura, aho, and heel, and down. Okay. And so when you do those kicks from the wall, you should be aiming to push your power, push forward a bit. Like, it's hard to explain because it's not a push kick. But you want to, when you extend your leg, there's a certain moment where you apply just a little bit more power coming from the hip. And it's more like a snapping thing. It's not exactly like a push kick, which I will eventually teach people. Um, push kick is more often used in sparring. <laughs> it's really a sparring technique. I mean, it could be a good defensive technique because it is a push kick. It's the whole intention of a push kick is to basically, you know, gain some distance from your opponent. And that's why it's called a push kick because you're trying to just push them away and get some distance. Mm -hmm. uh, whew, I haven't done those in a while. Those actually feel really good. <laughs> All right, so what are we at? Just past the 45 minute mark. Okay, I'm gonna take a breather, grab some water. Uh, beginners can uh, catch up. And if anybody else has questions. Hmm? Great quirks go against their opponent's kills. Yes, they would, but not inspiring. <laughs> Totally against the rules inspiring. That's hitting below the belt. Mm. That's actually funny. Still, not allowed in Taekwondo sparring. <laughs> Mostly because it is pretty dangerous to hit, uh, it, it is pretty dangerous to hit somebody in the pelvis, so yes, leave that strictly for self-defense. Um, Life-threatening situations. Um, I think Muay Thai is also a really good martial art, but it's a very, it's a pretty uh, fierce martial art and kind of brutal in my opinion, but it's a really effective martial arts, I think, for self-defense. But again, I would, I would advise using some of those techniques only in a very dire situation. It's still good to train it probably, but yeah, probably have to train on the Bob the Dummy. <laughs> And by Bob the dummy, I mean, you know, the Taekwondo dummy. Uh, they do it as a soft takedown, pressing slowly. Yeah, you can probably teach it that way, yeah. Like I said, some of the techniques uh, can be pretty brutal in some martial arts, so caution is always advised. <laughs> um, the higher level with Taekwondo does teach you some other stuff that is... Uh... <laughs> you remember that joke Master Kim always makes with the black belt pattern? You remember that technique? Yes. <laughs> There are some brutal techniques in Taekwondo when you get higher up. And I think I think they I think they left those techniques for the higher higher uh, black belt patterns for a reason. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, I'm gonna take a little break and I'm gonna switch and we're gonna do some strength training. Oh sorry, you didn't see me drink actually. Here are, now you can actually see me drinking. Sorry, I went off. I went off camera to drink. Okay, right, Nate, you can clear the you can clear the reward. <sighs> Do you know how to clear the reward? There you go. All right, so we're gonna do some strength training. Um, earlier in some earlier on in my previous streams, I did say that. Uh, Cross training with Taekwondo is probably is actually a really good idea. 
if not ideal. I actually think it's ideal to cross train with Taekwondo. So cross train with running, which will give you some cardio. Um, Taekwondo is anaerobic, so if you're going to use running training to help build, you can use running training to help build up. Hi, Noella, how's it going? How are you today? <laughs> you made it for my Taekwondo stream. Unfortunately, I'm switching to the strength training part today. We just did some kicks, some basic stuff. Uh, but you can always watch the VOD. And I actually also have this stuff on YouTube. Uh, oh, hold on, where's my mouse? Actually, I should plug my YouTube. So everyone, um, in case you miss the Taekwondo streams, everyone, you can go to my YouTube channel and watch them there. I mean, they're also, they're also gonna be on Twitch as well, um, but you can also go to the YouTube channel for it. Um, so cross training Taekwondo, definitely running training. Uh, taekwondo tends to be stop, go, stop, go, which is anaerobic exercise. So if you're going to use running training uh, to help you with anaerobic, you can do sprint work. So sprint, stop, sprint, stop, that kind of stuff. Also running, obviously endurance training. If you just run for a while and just keep a, keep a steady pace with your running to help build up endurance and try to go for a longer distance, longer time. Hi, Nate. She says, hi, Nate. <laughs> um, also, skipping in Taekwondo is actually really good. Um, some people may not know this. 10 minutes of skipping is actually uh, more cardio than 10 minutes of running. <laughs> um, so skipping is really good for Taekwondo because in Taekwondo, especially Taekwondo sparring, we do a lot of this. But practically, even at for self-defense, it's good to be mobile. So it's always good to be able to get on your toes as quickly as possible um, and stay on your feet. Um, planting the feet is kind of like, keeping your feet planted tends to make you less mobile. And you can kind of feel it when you practice your kicks. If you're, if you're not on your toes when you're doing your kicks, if you're not mostly on your toes for the kicking, you'll feel like you're less mobile if you have your heel planted. Um, but yes, strength training, I highly recommend strength training um, along with Taekwondo, not for the purpose of bodybuilding, but for the purpose of maintaining uh, core body strength, core body strength, as well as uh, basic muscle strength, because some of the, especially, but I think for any martial arts actually, in any martial arts, the way these techniques work is um, you do need some core body strength because if you don't have enough strength for some of the techniques, your joints will take the, take most of the, uh, I guess, impact and force. And that could be, that could be damaging for your joints, the ligaments inside your joints. Ligaments are what's in between your joints. That's what holds your joints together. Your muscles are flexible, but your joints are not. When you're, if you're, you're, sorry, your ligaments are not flexible. So if you hurt your ligaments that require surgery, Muscles don't require surgery. So it's important to keep up some muscle strength. Uh, you saw a Fuella. Wait, what? For YouTube. Huh? Oh, YouTube. Oh, cool. Thank you. Oh, you too. Okay, cool. <laughs> I keep forgetting, especially shoulder ligaments. Yeah, that seems way worse than a knee injury, actually. Um, yeah. I think Nate knows, Nate might know a little bit about that right now. I keep forgetting YouTube has subs, not followers. It's weird. <laughs> All right, so some strength training. Let's do, um, let's do some shoulders. weights here um, yeah uh, back in back in Canada I was using pounds but because I'm in Europe 
it adds such as kilograms. So um, three kilograms is 6.6 .6 pounds. Um, I think I can do that with my shoulders. If not, I'll drop it to the two kilogram one. So let's do some strength training. So I'm going to strengthen up the shoulders. Um, all right. So I've got two three kilogram pound, uh, three kilogram weights here. Um, people new to weight training can start a little smaller if they want, especially someone who has, has messed up frozen shoulder, secondary to a fall and rotator cuff stuff. Yeah, three kilograms is about it's well it's times two point two, so it's six point six pounds. So it's about five pounds. It's a little bit more than five pounds actually. So we're gonna do some shoulder exercises. The first one I'm gonna do is holding it like this, starting from this position. So when you do when you do strength training, try to keep your body fairly relaxed, maintain position. And now a lot of people do strength training wrong. They what you're supposed to do with strength training is isolate the muscles that you are planning on training. So in this case, I'm mostly just going to be training the shoulder muscles. Here, I'll just put these down for a second. Mostly going to be training my shoulder muscles, which are up here, which means i got to isolate, and the only movement should be in my shoulders, right? And that will work out the muscles in relation to the shoulders um, and that too. There are obviously certain strength training exercises that you that – <laughs> aim to work out more than one muscle at a time, which is more like working out a muscle group. Um, but again, you want to isolate to to the muscles that you are aiming to strengthen up. So so for this, you gotta be careful. So stand in a relaxed position. I like to stand I keep I like to stand maybe shoulder width apart, keep my knees loose, keep my shoulders fairly relaxed. Like that, and for this one, I'm gonna go straight up and up, up to the front like this. I'm gonna hana, and it's important not to to not shrug your shoulder doing this either, because that use utilizes your neck muscles, which you don't want to do. You just want to do that. You, you might actually tense up your neck muscles if you shrug your shoulders. So that's two. Three, and you don't want to use your back. Keep your back steady. Four, five, six, seven, eight. actually a little tough. Normally the other ones are pretty easy for me. So now I'm gonna do these. So again, keep your keep the rest of your body fairly relaxed. Keep your back steady. Try not to use your back. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do these alternating. So I did 10. I'm gonna do these alternating now. Yeah. So I'm gonna just do five each side I guess. No I actually should do 20 if I want to do 10 for both. So Two, set, net, dasa, yasa, delga, yoda, aho, and yo, and another ten. And remember, don't use your shoulder, don't shrug your shoulders, don't use your neck muscles, just push up. Hana, tu, set, net, dasa, yasa. Ilgap, Yura, Ahop, and Yo. Okay, I'm going to put those down for a little bit. I think for the next couple, I might have to switch. <laughs> I think I have to drop the weight for the next one. So, the next one we have to do is the one where you uh, 
just extend your hands out, which works this part of your shoulders. Those are here, these muscles. I believe that just works the deltoids, right, gang? Yeah. It's that little deltoid muscle. This one works sort of like this part right here will work this one. And then going up is like, it's a slightly different motion because it goes all the way up. So it's still this, but it goes, yeah. I, might have, I think I'm gonna drop the weight for the next two shoulder exercises. kilograms which is 4.4 pounds so that means it's a little less than five <laughs> so we got two kilograms the other one was three all right so again I'm gonna stand in the same position and just keep everything relaxed I'm just gonna straighten up my shoulders a bit and why is my nose itchy all right so we're going to do this, arms straight out to the sides. Why is my nose itchy? Okay. So I'll keep things relaxed. And remember, don't shrug your shoulders, don't use your neck muscles. Keep your back straight, don't use your back, don't use anything else. We're just going to use the motion of our arms and lift them straight out to the side. Hana. Two. Set. Net. Dasa. Yasa. Ilka. Yura. Aho. And yo. And down and relax. Relax for a few. Ah. Yes, Nate, that you, you seem to have wrenched that shoulder. Mm -hmm. You really think mm -hmm. it's a frozen shoulder? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. So the last shoulder uh, the last shoulder exercise I'm gonna do. Um, actually works these muscles back here and so so and normally if you go to the gym you have a machine where you can just do this and push back um, since I don't have a machine to do that so basically it's working these muscles back here and it's kind of um, part of your shoulder but it works some muscles around the shoulder blade area so on both sides and you push back like that so you work, you're working these muscles. Um, so the way to do this, the way I do this with free weights is you're gonna have to lean over. <laughs> so you're gonna have to bend at the waist. So you're gonna bend at the waist. Can't see the screen right now. Okay, you're gonna bend at the waist and we're gonna go out. And I need some more room than that. <laughs> so like that. And I keep my knees bent for this, makes it a little easier, and I do it this way. So, and again, so, so remember to keep your body fairly relaxed, keep your body, keep your uh, torso, don't use your torso for this just your arms and utilize only the muscles in the, in the back of your shoulder, basically. Uh, okay, the room? Yeah, the room. Okay, so start with your arms straight to the ground like that and we're gonna just extend to the sides. Hana. Two. Set. Net, dasa, yusa, ilga, yuro, aho, and yo. Okay, 
and that's it for the shoulder muscles right now. Um, I haven't done those in a while. That actually didn't, that one actually didn't feel as, for some reason I find this one harder to do. This one. This one and this one feel harder to do. The one doing the back doesn't feel quite as hard for me. I don't know why. Okay, so next one. We should strengthen some arms and we will also do some stuff we will also do some squats for the legs, and I think that's what we're going to end up doing today. So, to strengthen, no, actually, I forgot what I was going to do. Well, I was going to want to strengthen the, the triceps. I should do some stretches as well after this because I'm warmed up enough. Um, anyway, so to do the triceps, let me put this over here. So to do the triceps, what we do is we use the chair and lean over and you start your hand with your hand like this and to work these muscles in the back of your arm. You start like this and just extend straight back with the weight. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go back to the, I'm gonna use that, I don't remember which one I did last week, <laughs> last time. Did I use the, did I use the three or two? I'll just use the two for now. I don't remember. It might, mm -hmm. If it feels too easy, whatever. I can always do more later. <laughs> so the tricep one. So start like this, right? So you're going to start like that and just extend straight to the back. Go. Hana. Two. Set. Net. Dasa. Yasa. Ilgap. Yuro. Ahop. And yo. And we can switch to the other side. <laughs> And body weight triceps dips on the chair. Yeah, I like doing these this version this way better. Plus, um, I think it, with doing the dips on the chair, it eventually it's your body weight one, but eventually it'll just be like too easy. Unless I mean, you can just do more repetitions, I guess, but. <laughs> All right, so the other side. I'm gonna do this one, and we're gonna go straight back. Hana, tool, set, net, dasa, yasa, ilgo, yuro, aho, and yo. All right, that's the triceps. Lee points out that that's the same motion that you need for the hammer fist, so it's good for that. <laughs> Which hammer fist? Oh, you mean this one? Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, generally with martial arts, most of the time you there's always some technique that will hit some other muscle in your body that you hadn't thought about using before, and then you're like, oh. For you, especially with Taekwondo, all of a sudden you realize you have tiny little muscles in your feet that would cramp up. <laughs> um, so uh, running training, uh, running training. If you do it's like a 10k, I don't know what happened. I don't know if everyone gets this, but I had a had a slight cramp in my foot after the first 10k I did. It was uh, pretty tight here on the insole. It's just like. 
what is that? <laughs> and it was definitely a muscle thing. It wasn't, it wasn't some, some foot condition or anything. It was definitely a muscle. Because <laughs> it just felt better after. Uh, I, think we just, I think we just used acupressure technique on it. Um, the uh, Master Kim's brother is like, oh, just do this. <laughs> Which, you know, made me scream a little bit because it was like, ow, 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 why are you doing that? But it felt better afterwards. All right, so I'm going to do biceps, bicep curls. Um, standing up, we're going to do bicep curls. So, again, don't use anything but the arm motion, the motion. Um, so with the bicep curls, the box is not steady. Bicep curls, I'm just going to come up like that. So keep your back straight. Don't move your back. You don't do this. Okay? <laughs> you want to move the weight up. That's the motion you want. And you want to keep, keep your body fairly relaxed. And, and don't use anything else but that one motion to strengthen your biceps. So I'm going to do them. I'm going to do them alternating, so that means I'll do, do a count of 20. <sighs> Hana, two. Hey, Sig! Sig. <laughs> Net. Dasa. Ilsa. Ilga. Yuro. Aho. Yo, how's it going, Sig? Thanks for the raid. Uh, may you do a shout out? Mm -hmm. How's it going? How is your stream today? <laughs> Party of 19. Oh, hey, how's it going? We got the hill getting ripped. Oh, just not really. Just uh, muscle toning, strength training, strength training, cross training with Taekwondo. Um, very important to keep your muscles strengthened up or you're more likely to have injuries. <laughs> <laughs> welcome Raiders, welcome Raiders, don't be shy, say hi. I'm sorry you missed the Taekwondo portion of the stream, but it's heading towards the hour and a half, so I'm going to do a little bit more strength training, and then we're going to do some stretching. It was good, a nice little German practice and some good chat, nothing wrong with that. That's cool, that's cool. How's the German going? I saw you were on the other day. How's the German going? Ugh. I think my brain has been Dutchified, but that was last week. Hopefully, it's better this week. I'm gonna be doing Dutch on uh, Thursday. Dutch donder da. I feel better and better about it every day. That's good. I know you're getting a little frustrated with it. But these things really do take time. Trust me, I'm still making mistakes on Dutch, and I have to forget what I'm saying. <laughs> But yes, yeah, so uh, yeah, so welcome to the Taekwondo Tuesday, everyone. Unfortunately, you missed some of the Taekwondo, um, but I'm doing a little bit of strength training uh, just to maintain muscle tone. It's very important to have uh, to maintain muscle tone for martial arts, I think. Um, otherwise, you're more likely to hurt the ligaments in your joints. And I gotta do another set of this. So I was doing ten each arm. So I'm just gonna do some biceps. Oh, why is my nose itchy? <sighs> Hana. Do. Set. Net. Dasa. Yasa. Ilga. Yoro. Aho. And yo. And we're done with the arms for now. We are going to do some squats. Um. Yes, and I'm counting in Korean, sick because it's Taekwondo. <laughs> Red Panda, how's it going? Please help me with Taekwondo. I've been trying it for a few years, but the place I go to isn't helping me at this point. Would you, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, stick around for the stream. What in particular do you need help with? And I'm sorry if the school isn't helping you. <laughs> That's sad to hear. I've been... Oh, not being dizzy? Okay, not being dizzy could be a variety of issues, also medical issues, so maybe you should go and talk to your doctor. Um, I don't know if Nate, you have some comments about that. 
you had that for a while. But I definitely recommend going to a doctor. I'm not a, I'm not a medical professional. <laughs> I know a little bit about anatomy and physical fitness, but that's about it. Um, uh, yeah, if it's not a medical issue, the key thing is making sure you look over your shoulder before you turn. Yeah, it depends on like when when are you getting dizzy. <laughs> Um, okay, so we got to do some squats, and welcome to my stream. Did you come in with the raid, or you just popped in on the stream with the panda? Um, definitely, um, sometimes with dizziness, yes, it could just be breathing. It could be just breathing issues, but also, I mean, it's possible you could have asthma that you don't know about, so I would recommend going to a doctor either way, I think. Um, you should always be trying to look at a focus point while you turn so, so that you don't get disoriented. Yes. Kind of need more specifics about when you get dizzy though. Some people get dizzy with exercise. Okay, so we're going to do some squats and we are going to go and just go into our Taekwondo horse stance position. So this is called a horse stance in Taekwondo. Jujun uh, Sogi is the Korean term. And so for our, tiger, for our horse stance, sorry, for our horse stance in Taekwondo, we stand with our toes pointed forward, about two shoulder widths apart, bend the knees, make sure you don't pull your knees in, keep your knees over your toes. And we're gonna just do some squats using the horse stance position from Taekwondo. So what we're gonna do is, and remember we're with this Taekwondo position, do technically want you to sit, you can probably go about as low as that. So we're gonna do squats this way. So I'm gonna do 10. So, Hana, tool, set, net, dasa, oops, yosa, ilga, yuro, aho, and yo. And relax. So that's our 10 squats. And now, last 10 minutes, I think I have time to uh, get some stretching in. You can also get dizzy if your blood pressure drops when you stop moving, but that's closer to a medical issue. Also with self-defense, it feels like I'm thinking about a defense tree instead of a consistent understanding of movements. I feel like there are too many options for me to think about on positive. Note, I'm familiar with this counting from my classes. Ah, uh, that's good. So at least they, they taught you a bit of Korean. What kind of Taekwondo did you do? World Tea Kitty? Okay, yeah. Well, that would, yeah, it could be the same style, but it could also vary depending on the school. Um, not, you're not too sure. <laughs> yeah, oops. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, different Taekwondo schools could vary depending. Um, all of my training has been in World Taekwondo, um, with official, uh, World Taekwondo sanctioned schools. Um, so I actually have, uh, black belts, I have a black belt certificate from the World Taekwondo Federation. Um, yeah, yeah, that's unfortunate, I'm sorry about that, I don't know, well, I mean, I don't want to ask too many personal questions, but I guess it also depends where you are. Um, I'm from Toronto, Canada, and there's a lot of good Taekwondo schools there. Um, and that's how I was able to get, uh, get to train at a, uh, an official World Taekwondo sanctioned school. Um, other, other places may not be so fortunate. Uh, so, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> self-defense, it feels like I'm thinking about a defense trait instead of consistent understanding of movements. Uh... Not entirely sure what you mean. Um, I guess maybe that can happen if you're like, just kind of want to know everything at once. But my best advice is probably just to try to learn each technique, each technique as you go, and try to get a firm, firm founding in some of the basics before you move forward. Uh, um, and I'm not sure what self-defense techniques you're talking about. Um, Taekwondo does have some, but mostly self-defense arts are like Hapkido. The Korean self-defense art is Hapkido. 
Uh, Aikido is a Japanese one that's purely self-defense. Um, taekwondo kicks do get mixed in with Hapkido techniques, but for the most part, Hapkido is purely self-defense. Like if I were to defend myself, I got get caught on what to do next because of all the options. So are you talking about sparring class or just, I mean, that's, that's a totally different issue. I mean, this is a whole other issue when we talk about real life, trying to defend oneself. That's a whole other issue. And um, Nate, that book on combat that I haven't read, but you told yeah. me the premise of it. Yeah, you can explain that. Um, I'm gonna do some stretches. Um, we're gonna do some stretches to cool down a little bit. Um, so Taekwondo, if you want to build flexibility, and I mean improve your flexibility for and get better so that you, you can uh, do your high kicks in Taekwondo, definitely important to do your front splits and your side splits and try to gain more flexibility with that. Um, front splits are really good for doing, helping you with your axe kicks, your crescent kicks, and your front snap kicks, doing high front snap kicks. So front, front split, I'm going to do it with this leg out, oh I already feel a stretch. So just do this for the front split, I'm trying to hold for a little bit. My floor here is really slippery, I don't like it for this, because it's hard to control my splits. So I'm going to have to do front splits, I should probably do my front splits in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> on the blankets where I have control over the uh, oh more control over the, the surface so that I'm not accidentally pulling my leg too much so and then do that in a switch remember switching to the other leg as well for your front splits okay yeah this one is a little awkward and side splits side splits so side splits, what we're going to do is we're going to start by, uh, you can do side splits this way. Just put your legs out like this, right? I don't know if everyone can see me really well. I know my, the space I have in my apartment is pretty limited. But so basic side splits, try to sit down on the floor with your legs outstretched like this. I say pull your toes back so that you get a proper full stretch in the muscles under your legs. And if it's a little tight in here, you can pound on it, massage it out a little bit, make sure your muscles are relaxed though, and just try to do your front splits. So from here, sometimes I like to do this when I'm doing my front splits. I try to stretch up this side while I do it. And then the other side, we'll do that. So, but to get better at first splits, I also go this way. I try to bend, I try to bend to my uh, right leg, bend over to my right leg, right, while I do the front splits. And now if you do what I do and have your toes pointed up and pulled back, you should also feel a stretch in your calf. I mean, unless you're really flexible already, you won't feel that. And then the other side, again, I do have my toes pointed up, it's hard for you to see it, but um, again, so the other side, which is my left side, lean over to that, and then you can try leaning forward, which apparently is really hard for me to, these days, because I haven't done a lot of type no, and I haven't done a lot of stretching in recent years. Okay, so that's your side splits. If you have trouble starting with the side splits, you can start by doing these, and it works this part, stretches out this part a lot better. So bend one leg and then keep the other one straight. Um, I, think, I think somewhere they call this a hurdle stretch. <laughs> Can't remember, and the same with that one. And let me just check quickly. Uh, Yes, um, I just go back on the chat, uh, yes, and I 
do have a couple of discords people can join. My gift board, uh, are you talking about sparring or in real life self fencing? Are you constantly getting into fights? Well, no, I don't plan on it. Good thing. The best thing for in real life self defense is always running away. Barring that, you need to train techniques with a partner to the point that they become muscle memory because you won't have time to consciously make plans with adrenaline going. And it also makes fine motor control impossible if it's not in your muscle memory. Too much shaking and tunnel vision. Ah, oh, yes, that has helped me. And I'm feeling better. I'm getting, I feel I'm getting better in specific areas. So the best thing is to train the really basic stuff like basic blocks and simple combinations with a partner and gradually do them faster while working to maintain your control. Then hopefully some of it actually makes it into your muscle memory because unless you're constantly getting into fights or doing MMA, most of it goes out the window when the adrenaline hits. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. <laughs> okay, demonstrate some basic self-defense combos on the stream like very simple punch kick combos and so on. Yes, I do. Uh, some very basic type of no. Um, but um, one of the most basic self-defense things I've ever learned and will probably always try to fall back on, and it also depends on the situation, depends on how I attack, but the basic one, if somebody comes straight forward and grabs my hand like this, basic one for me, because I am actually a fairly small person, and generally someone's going to be bigger than me, is somebody grabs here, go straight up, keep your hand, keep your hand palm open, go straight up like this. So he grabs like that, go pull straight up really fast, twist, right? And if, if you can't break, and you can go like this to try to break out. If you can't break out, if somebody grabs you like that, you can also use an elbow on their arm to break out and pull. And then after that, run. Like Nate said, best thing for self-defense, run away. Um, so number one thing I would say for any self-defense situation is if you get grabbed, get out of it and just run. <laughs> uh, that's the safest thing until you get better at some of the things, uh, at some of the advanced self-defense stuff. So I should ask my instructor to focus more on basic punches and kicks because right now at least I feel a lot of pressure in doing complicated movements as a black belt. Oh, you're a black belt. What sort of movements out of curiosity? Let's go. Cool. Congratulations on the black belt. Yeah, I mean... I guess it depends. I mean, I, I mean, I've taught, I've taught, uh, I've taught Taekwondo off and on over the years that I've been training, and I actually got dragged into it fairly early on. I got dragged into uh, teaching basic Taekwondo when I was a green belt. I was teaching when I was a green belt. I was teaching new students and white belts um, some of the basic stuff. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm planning on doing this every Tuesday now. <laughs> we do a lot of spins. Yeah, I'm planning on doing this every Tuesday for now. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to add another stream yet or not. I'm just getting back into it. It's been about it's been about five years since I've officially trained in Taekwondo, and that was before I moved. Um, so, um, so yeah, that was some stretching. Uh, the last stretch, the last stretch before I end the stream is we like to call it a butterfly stretch. You basically sit on the floor, put your feet together like this and push, push your knees to the ground, you stretch. <coughs> it's a nice stretch for your uh, inner thighs here, and you can try to lean forward, okay? And a lot, of these a lot of these stretching exercises, if you have a partner, they can help hold you and pull you forward. Um, with this one, Nate would lean on my back and just push me forward that way too. So that's the last stretch I'm gonna do today was the butterfly stretch. Um, I tend to be fairly good at that because I used to study that way. <laughs> I used to sit like that and study. Um, but I do have to end the stream soon. It's been an hour and 30 minutes. And I will look for somebody to rate, but you guys can keep chatting. Okay, yeah, it really helps to spend a lot of time doing punches and basic roundhouse kicks. Uh, front snap kicks. <laughs> front snap kicks. Yeah, that too. You know, front snap kicks before the roundhouse kicks. Yeah. Working on speed and accuracy and power. But of course, everyone likes doing the fun flashy spin hook kicks as well. Um, I, I guess maybe, unfortunately, if you got to black belt, they might be trying to push you a bit more. But that's unfortunate because even as a black belt, I would say definitely review all the basics again over and over until they get better. I mean, it totally depends on 
how you trained when you first started Taekwondo. When I first started Taekwondo, I felt really clumsy, okay? <laughs> I felt stupidly clumsy. I don't think anyone has ever came to me and said, unless they already did martial arts before doing Taekwondo, but I don't think I ever met anyone who started Taekwondo as their first martial art and said, and never told me that they didn't have two left feet or two left hands doing Taekwondo. You have, basically, you walk in, you start Taekwondo, and you, you eventually just feel like you have two left hands and two left feet. And I still remember one time, I was just a beginner still, and I just signed up for like um, a couple of months of classes for free. Um, or was it, a, I think a month of classes for free. And I think at one point towards the end of that, I didn't know Taekwondo had patterns very similar to like Tai Chi. And <laughs> like Tai Chi patterns. And at one point in the class, like I was going along, I was following along at that point. I knew like I learned low blocks, I learned, I learned the stances, I learned low blocks, I learned some punching. And then all of a sudden we started doing something. We started doing a pattern and I got like the first four and then I got lost because they turned around like 270 degrees and I didn't realize which direction they turned. So I just kind of felt like I had two left feet. But then after that, was the master is teaching, he's like, anybody not, is anyone not know this? And I went, yeah, I don't know this. But um, one of the one of the junior instructors was a red belt. He came over and he's like, no kidding. I'm like, what? But he's actually a really good friend of mine over the years. Um, I watched him. I watched him go from red belt to black belt to to opening his own Hapkido school. Um, sadly, I had to move. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I think unfortunately some schools might push you a little harder once you get to uh, first and black belt. But definitely, if you have time. Uh, take some time and go over the basics all the time. If you want, you can feel free to watch my Taekwondo streams and the past broadcasts. I do have them on YouTube as well. Um, I still need to catch up on chat, but there's my YouTube channel. I'm posting, I've uploaded my Taekwondo streams onto there. And yes, say, feel free to pop in again. My main issues are spin hooks, kicks, and tornado kicks. Not well informed on these, so please excuse me. Okay, because I get really dizzy and feel pressure. Yeah, okay, spin, yeah, any spin kicks and tornado kicks, you gotta break it down into turn and turn. So don't spin. I know they're called spinning kicks, but don't spin. Think of it as a turn. I'll show you really quickly, especially for a spin hook kick. Think of it like this way, okay? You're facing this way, right? Turn, look towards the back, then look over your shoulder towards the front, and then do your kick. Do not, do not turn, do not turn. Do not turn. That's why you'll get dizzy. So try to break it down. Always break it down. So I'm, good. I'm facing that way. Turn and then look over your shoulder towards the front and then do your kick. That's the, that's the way to do the, these kicks. Uh, same, with, and same with tornado kicks. I believe the tornado kicks, you're talking about the tornado roundhouse kicks. Tornado roundhouse kicks, same thing. Turn, look. Do that and then do your kick. So turn and turn. You never spin 360. Turn 180, turn 180 again. Um, and that should help you. So just practice doing that. Um, that's also actually how they teach figure skaters, and it's also how they teach ballerinas, <laughs> ballet dancers. Actually, I should say ballet, ballet dancers, because there's male ballet dancers. Um, that's also how they teach ballet, and that's also how they teach figure skating. You turn and turn, don't spin. So you should that should help you with the dizziness. Yes, Sig, feel free to come and pop in some other time. Um, yay for those, the keys to look before you turn, which is really hard to train yourself to do, or at least it was for me. Yes, actually, with everything in martial arts, you should always look before you move in, and do any technique. Always look first. It is difficult. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. We're used to some... Pretty bad habits just wandering around. <laughs> uh, you really want your head to stay fixed relative to your target while your body is turning, otherwise you get dizzy. Yes, good way to explain it, Nate. I, I hear figure skaters have the same issue and have to learn to look with each turn for that reason. Yes, it is. Not a big issue since I can just go outside, but the place I usually practice has a fairly low ceiling, but axe kicks. This <laughs> Yeah, low ceilings are pretty bad. Can't even do uh, weapons training either. 
So anyways, there's my YouTube channel, everyone. It might be worth doing some extra footwork drills for the turning on your own where you focus just on the footwork and the looking without worrying too much about the actual kicking part. Yes, definitely do that. Definitely do that. One of the biggest things is a lot of people uh, skip this a lot. They'll skip the footwork drills in Taekwondo and hopefully I will try to get to that <laughs> in future streams. I will I'm going to keep trying to do Taekwondo Tuesday, um, so every Tuesday I will be doing Taekwondo in the afternoon, hopefully starting around 4 p.m. my time. I'm sorry it was a little late today. Um, feel free to pop in again for Taekwondo Tuesday. I will try to uh, demonstrate these things as we progress through these techniques that I'm teaching, but I'm also trying to also review uh, some of the basic stuff, basic techniques for anyone new popping into the stream. So. Um, so it'll depend. Today I kind of went through some of, the, some of the basic stuff pretty fast. We did some wall kicks, uh, kicking using the wall as support, and I did some strength training and some stretching. That is helpful. Hopefully, I'm glad. Hopefully it helps you out. Anyways, and, and I hope you keep up with your Taekwondo training. I'm sorry if it gets a little frustrating, but also, but also congrats on getting a black belt at least. <laughs> it's always fun and exciting, and I always said, when I got to black belt, I always said, you know what, this is not the end. <laughs> it's the beginning once it gets black belt. So there's a lot more you can do. Thank you for the students. Actually, very fortunate. You're welcome. Nate actually also has a black belt in Taekwondo. He has a first dan in Taekwondo. I have a fourth dan. <laughs> and that took some years to get. <laughs> um, yes, Red Panda, you're welcome. And yes, uh, thank you for the questions. Um, was, that's interesting. Um, I'm sorry, that's unfortunate, but hopefully it helps helps you, and hopefully helps you with uh, with your with your training in taekwondo in your taekwondo school. Yes, good luck. Uh, in Dutch, they say "vel succes," "vel geluk." Um, so let's go find somebody to raid. Uh, fail, fail, success. Fail, fail. Did I say fail? Yeah. Fail, fail. <laughs> <laughs> Those two are so easy to mix up. Come on, you, you yeah. gotta forgive me for that one. Fail. Okay, so who's. Okay, I see some people on. Uh, oh, yeah, I think. Okay, yeah, we are gonna raid. We are gonna raid somebody. Um, but let me just. I'm gonna take a quick look at this category. Um, I think I know who we're gonna raid, though, but I'm gonna. Let's see if we can find somebody else. I like to read new people, but I do have somebody in mind as well, and she seems really nice. <laughs> um, she might be doing her stream in German today, though, so any German speakers in chat, German learners in chat, here's your chance to practice some German listening with a uh, yeah, I think uh, I think we're gonna raid. We are gonna raid. We always I always raid. We are gonna raid someone, and uh, she's she's a nice she's a nice woman, nice lady. Um, thanks, you too. Yes, and welcome to my stream, Red Panda. Um, oh, I totally forgot Nate. I forgot the raid pop up. <laughs> you keep forgetting to. Well, I can't do it while I'm. Doing stuff, so you, okay, have, okay. you have to remind me. Dragon is the right pop up. She says, Thanks for bringing dragonlings. Hmm. She says, Thanks for bringing dragonlings. And hi, new people. <laughs> okay. It's kind of hard to do the raid pop up when I'm busy doing something else. But we're gonna raid. Um, hopefully, I have her, her name right. Oh. Uh, okay, hold on, wait, did I not open the stream? I need to open up that stream so I can check. Uh, okay, good. Uh, oh, of course I got the name wrong. I think I got the name wrong. Okay, so we are going to ray. Thanks for popping in, everyone. I will see you tomorrow with uh, non-monolingual and multicultural 
stream tomorrow afternoon around 3 p.m. I will be studying Indonesian on Duolingo and then Japanese on Lingo Dare for about an hour and a half tomorrow afternoon. Uh, and we are rating this wonderful lady who speaks English and German. I believe she's a native German speaker who lives in the UK. So she also speaks a bit of English. And she's doing some yoga. I don't know who's around, but feel free to read, come read, it's fun. Oh, everyone left now. Okay, read right now. Say ninja bar raid. This is just you. Okay. Apparently it's just me.